Hi, my name is Stephen Walther, and in this video, I'm going to blast through building an entire ASP.NET NVC application from start to finish. The goal here isn't to offer a lot of explanation, I just want to give you a quick overview of the process of building an NVC application, and I want to keep the whole process really short. So what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a basic database-driven application, we'll be creating a, a movie database application, and our movie database application will enable us to you know, list records from a database, and it will allow us to insert new records in a database, and that's it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use Visual Studio 2008 to create my MVC application. So we're going to start by going to File and New Project. Don't select New Website, select New Project. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick Visual C Sharp as my programming language. I'm going to pick the web category over here on the left. And I'm going to pick ASP.NET MVC Web Application as my project template over here on the right. Um, I'm going to name my new application Movie App. Click OK. And it's going to ask me if I want to create a test project. Now, we're actually not going to create unit tests. Um, so, but um, I always find it easier just to say yes here in case I need to create unit tests later on. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to click OK and create a separate unit test project. Now, at this point, Visual Studio is creating two projects. It's creating our actual you know, movie database application, but it's also creating that unit test project. So you'll see we have something called Movie App, and down here we have something called Movie App Tests. Now, when Visual Studio first creates a new MVC application, it gives us a number of sample files by default. I want to start from scratch, so I'm going to erase those. So I'm going to go to my Controllers folder, and I'm going to erase the Home Controller. Remove that. And I'm going to go to my Views folder, and I'm going to remove the Home folder. I've erased that. And down here um, in my Unit Tests, I'm going to go ahead and remove the Unit Tests for my Home Controller. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and build our application. We're going to start by creating a, a new database. Um, I'm going to create a SQL Express database. So I'm going to right-click on the App Data folder. I'm going to select Add New Item. I'm going to select SQL Server Database, and I'm going to call my new Click Add, and I have a new SQL Express Database. Now I want to add a table into a database table um, named Movies. So I'm going to double click on the Movies DB database. That's going to open up the Server Explorer window for me. I'm going to right click on Tables, select Add New Table, and is start with a, uh, an ID column, an identity column, that'll be an integer column. I want to make sure that that's ID column, so auto number as I add new. So I'm going to expand identity specification, double click next to identity. This is now an identity column. Um, movie should have title, so I'm going to have a add a title column. And movie's director, so let's put in a uh, director column. And finally, let's put in a date released column. Date time column, uh, don't allow nulls. I'm going to click the floppy to save my, uh, my new database table. I'm going to name it movies. And now we have you know, our necessary database objects. Now, um, it'll make life easier if we have some data um, to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the new table that we just created. Select show table data. I'm just going to add a couple of movies into, into my database. So I'm going to add uh, Star Wars. Lucas was the director. I have no idea when it was released, so I'm just going to put in. Uh, that was directed by Jackson. And again, I really don't know when that was released. Let's say that that was released in 2001. Uh, all right, so now I have some data. OK, so I have a database. The next step for me is I need to say uh, working with that database from my MVC application. So to do that, I'm going to take advantage of the Entity Framework to create some data model classes. Um, so I'm going to go to my Models folder. Right click on that, I'm going to select Add New Item. I'm going to select the Data Category, and I'm going to select ADO.NET Entity Data Model. Now, you do need Service Pack 1 to use the Entity Framework. So um, you do need ASP.NET 3.5 um, Service Pack 1, or more generally, the .NET Framework Service Pack 1 to use the Entity Framework. So I'm going to name my uh, data model classes, data model. Click Add. 
This opens up the Andy Data Model Wizard. I want to generate my classes from the database. Um, I'm going to pick my Movies DB database. If that doesn't show up, you can pick it from the drop down list. Notice the name is going to create a uh, object context class called Movies DB Entities. Click Next. This allows me to pick the database tables that I want to create model classes for. Um, I only have one table called Movies, so I'll select that. I'm going to change the namespace to Models and click Finish. Um, at this point, the Entity Framework Designer opens up and it shows the new movies classes that we created. Now this is a C-sharp class the Entity Framework has generated for us. Um, it represents the movie database table. Now notice it's called Movies. This is going to represent a particular row from the, uh, from the movies database table. So I want to change this name. I'm going to click on it and change this name to Movie. And that way um, it makes more sense because it represents a particular movie. All right, so now we've created our model class. Um, if you look over here in the Solution Explorer, um, now our models folder has a data model.edmx file, and that it contains our, our model classes for our MDC project. So the next thing I want to do is create a controller. So I'm going to right click on the controllers folder. I'm going to select add controller, and I'm going to name a controller home controller. Notice there's a checkbox down here. I'm going to check it. What that'll do is it'll automatically add stub methods for common database operations, listing database records, creating them, um, showing details for them, and editing them. So I'm going to click Add. I've gotten my home controller. Let me close this window down here in the bottom. And I want to um, start by showing all the database records from my movie's database table. So I'm going to create an instance of the Entities Framework Context class. The entities. Notice the underline, the red underline, that tells me I can hit control dot. Um, I'm going to hit return and that will add the right namespace into the page so I can add, so I can use the movies db entities class. Now I have a way to communicate with the database. Um, I have an action called index. So now use that entities field that I just created. Type in movie set and convert it to a list. And now I'm returning all the movie records. Now I'm ready to create a view that will actually display the records. So I'm going to right click on the index. I'm going to select add view. Um, it's called index right here. I'm going to say I want to create a strong type view. Now I'm not going to get any data classes right now. The reason for that is I haven't compiled my application. So I'm going to click cancel. And I'm going to do a build. There we go. No errors. That's always a good sign. I'm going to click Add View again. And select Create a Strongly Typed View. And for the View Data Class, now I can select Movie. For the View Content, I want to show the list of movies. I'm going to select List. I'm going to click Add. And this auto-generates a view for listing all the movies. Notice that auto-generates a view with an HTML table in front of it, which shows all of the properties, um, the value of all the columns from the underlying database table. So um, now we can run our application and we can actually see our database records. So first, run the application is going to ask whether I want to go into debug mode. Um, okay. It'll open up a browser. And notice that we get our database records. So it actually, you know, it's formatted nicely. Um, it's using the default style sheet and it's using the default master page. So the next step for us is we've now able to show the records. I want to be able to add a new record. So um, I'm going to uh, modify two other controller actions in the home controller. So going back to the home controller, I want to modify these two actions um, named create. Now notice there's two create actions. The reason for that is the first create action is called when you're retrieving the form for creating a new movie. And then that form submits this form data to the second create action down here, which is actually responsible for taking that form data and you know inserting a new movie data database record into the database. So first thing I want to do is I want to create the form for creating a new movie. So I'm going to right click on this create action and select um, add view. Um, it's going to be a strongly type view. Again, I want to represent a movie, but this time for the view content, I'm going to select create, click add, and now I have a new HTML form. This is auto-generated for me, and it has form fields. Um, this is going to create text boxes for each of the fields, uh, for each of the columns in the database. Now notice it has created a text box for the ID column. That's an auto number column. That's an identity column. So we don't want that. So I'm going to delete that field. And um, now we have you know, a perfectly fine form for entering form data. 
So going back to the home controller, I need to create the second action, the second create action here. This is the action that actually submits the data to the database. I'm going to change this so it actually takes a movie as a parameter. And I'm going to call it movie to create. And um, when we have it create the movie, we don't want it to create the ID column because that's an auto, um, that's an auto generated column. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to exclude that column. when creating this movie to create object. All right, so um, the next thing I need to do is fill out the database logic here. So I'm going to put in entities, add to movie set, movie to create, and then save the modified movie set by calling save changes. And we should be done. So I'll go ahead and run this. And the default index, um, the default index view includes a link for creating a new record. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and I'll put in a, a new movie. Um, I just saw Australia. Uh, I have no idea who directed that. Somebody. And I also have no idea when it was released. So I'll just say sometime in 2008. Click create, and notice we get our new database record. So we're done. So we've created a basic database driven um, application, a movie database application using ASP.NET MVC. It's only taken us a, a few minutes here. Um, the goal of this video was hopefully to, to give you a, a sense of the process of building an ASP.NET MVC app.